it's that time to look at the figures and see if the solar panels were worth it. We're only a month in and it's only been February, so it's not going to be the most fair test, but this is going to be the first of a monthly update throughout the year of how our solar panels are performing. And the question that I think most people are interested in is how do the north facing panels compare to the south facing panels? So I'm going to run you through our numbers. I'll share my conclusions and you can make your conclusions as well. If you haven't seen my previous video about the installation, I'll link it in the description or however YouTube works and you can see um, how what we've got here. But basically we've got 16 panels on the back of our house which is northwest facing. We've got six panels on the front of our house which is southeast facing we've got a sunsink eight kilowatt inverter and we've got no battery storage maybe in the future i'll do a dedicated video to that so our february total for generation is 230 kilowatt hours from what i can see this is below the average for february uh, in comparison to the previous few years let me show you how that's broken down um, so this was our profile over the month of february you can see that we had some good days at the start of the month and then it dipped down but generally there was quite a lot of uh, cloud cover so i haven't plotted on here what the mean generation was but you can see the days over 10 kilowatt hours were pretty scarce so we were happy to get 230 at the end of the month uh, this shows the number of panels or the kilowatt peak uh, contrast in the northwest aspect with the southeast aspect. And as you can see, the slice of the pie is considerably northwest, but the southeast does slightly outperform the northwest panel to panel. 85.85 uh, .85 kilowatt hours were generated on the southeast roof and 144.1 kilowatt hours generated on the northwest facing roof. Um, from the 230 that was generated in total, we uh, managed to self-consume 137 kilowatt hours. And again, you can see the profile throughout the month here. Um, luckily for us, we managed to kind of tweak the heat pump to be able to use as much of the energy as possible. So yeah, we didn't use a whole 230 that we could have if we had home battery storage, but um, we're still happy with it. We exported 93 kilowatt hours. And here shows you again the profile of the export, export bars in the red pinky color. Okay, um, I'm trying to keep this snappy. So this is, shows the uh, contrast of our self-consumption and the export is almost a perfect 60% and 40% split. So we self-consumed 137 kilowatt hours and we exported 93 kilowatt hours. In terms of pounds and pence, that equates to 38 pounds were self-consumed if we were on the price cap rate for Get, making it a level, level playing field throughout the year anyway and the exported will be paid 14 pounds for because that's 15p per kilowatt hour um, maybe later in the year i will uh, consolidate all of these financials against what we're actually paying on octopus tracker which is a much much better rate than the price cap so you might want to investigate that for yourself so what about the optimizers that were fitted on our southeast facing roof um they're tigo ones they come with a cloud connect which shows me a panel by panel breakdown um that shows me basically that 94 percent of the energy that those panels produced was not utilizing the optimizers and six percent of the energy or 5.38 kilowatt hours was because of the optimizers that makes me question whether optimizers are worthwhile i was happy to option them to be on the safe side we have a bit of shade in from the front gable especially later in the day and i thought optimizers might come into their own um, february isn't going to be the best test the proof will be in the pudding over the course of the whole year so i'm going to hold my verdict on optimizers for now but my initial thoughts are not that they're necessarily the very best or necessary in my case 
So what do I think about north facing panels and are they worthwhile? Let me just run you back to this slide. Shows that 37% was generated by southeast, 63% by northwest. If we didn't make the leap to get some north facing panels, we would have only generated 85.85 kilowatt hours for the month of February. With the northwest, with the northwest facing panels, we've generated 230. We're again, we're going to see maybe that profile will change a little bit throughout the year. Um, but some people saying that the north facing roof will produce really well in the height of summer because the the sun will be so high in the sky, it'll hit those north facing panels a lot earlier in the day. Um, I think when we look at the difference here between the amount of northwest facing panels, 16 of them, and six southeast facing, the of course the southeast ones are performing better, but not by a huge margin. Now, what is going in favour of the northwest panels is as soon as there is diffused light, which basically means any kind of cloud cover and there's not direct sunlight then all of the panels are performing exactly the same. It doesn't matter which aspect they're on, front of the roof, rear of the roof. And a lot of February, we've had a lot of cloud cover, which has really helped those northwest facing panels. So I'll be interested to see in the coming months if the southeast aspect starts to gain a bit of advantage as there's more and more direct sunlight in the morning for it to grab. I don't know, um, but this is an interesting experiment to see. Right, what else haven't I mentioned? Um, showing you some of my graphs here. Maybe I'm flicking through it a bit too quickly. You can always pause and look at any of this information. But as with all of my videos, I do have, um, I do collect my data in a spreadsheet and um, here I'm still toying with what is important for me to record and what's not important for me to record. Some of this data might be interesting to you, perhaps it's not interesting to you. Uh, for example, you can see the um, the optimizers on quite a few of these days just don't really kick in. They, they barely generate a watt uh, or a couple of watts um, on some of these cloudy overcast days. The optimizers just aren't doing much at all. Um, there's some of the totals down the bottom there if that interests anyone. This is showing our um, total grid consumption over on column B. So that's still what we're importing. Um, bearing in mind that we have a heat pump and the energy consumption that comes with that. Our self-consumption, our total uh, consumption is the sum of both grid consumption and self-consumption. I was uh, putting in some of the forecast in there, but um, that has run amiss. So to bring this to a close, we generated 230 kilowatt hours during February. That averages out to 7.93 kilowatt hours per day. Now, interestingly, when we signed up for the system, the forecast that we were given for the generation was February to average out at 7.63 kilowatt hours per day. So we've uh, exceeded the forecast. We've gone from 7.63 up to 7.93 is our actual generation. And on top of that, I'm being told that this February was anywhere between 20 to 30 percent lower generation than in previous years. And so there was potential for a lot more. We're looking forward to March. Our estimated generation is should be around 14 kilowatt hours per day. So we're looking at doubling our generation throughout the month. Hopefully we'll get up from 230 kilowatt hours and I'd love to see us up and touching 500 kilowatt hours let's put that out there as the goal will we make 500 kilowatt hours in march that would be excellent and then of course we're going to be going into the much much better months april may june july august looking forward to seeing what our new system does in terms of generation and how we can use that and how we can make it work um, i hope there's been something interesting in this video for you um 
if there's some value in this, then give us a thumbs up and subscribe. We're going to be sharing a lot more information on our solar system, how it's performing and how it's working with our heat pump. Also, any feedback? This is my first video on how the solar panel system is performing. So if you've got any tips or hints or pointers for me, then just drop them in the comments and I'll implement them as I go forward in the coming months. Thanks for watching.